Hello friends, welcome to UPSC Logics and in this chapter we shall have a look at the emergency provisions that have been provided in part 8 and cover from article 352 to 360. So in this particular chapter we shall have a look at one of these that fall under article 352 and is popularly known as national emergency. So during the emergency, the central government becomes all powerful and the state goes into a total control of the center and it converts the federal structure into a unitary one without a formal amendment of the constitution. So this kind of transformation of the political system from federal during normal times to a unitary one during emergency is a unique feature of the Indian constitution. And as Dr. B. R. Ambedkar in this context observed in the Constituent Assembly and had said, all federal systems, including American, are placed in a tight mold of federalism. No matter what the circumstances, it cannot change its form and shape. It can never be unitary. On the other hand, the Constitution of India can be both unitary as well as federal, according to the requirements of time and circumstances. In normal times, it is framed to work as a federal system, but in times of emergency, it is so designed as to make it work as though it was a unitary system. So there are three types of emergencies. The first one, which we are covering in this chapter, falls under Article 352 and is known as National Emergency. The second one, which we shall cover in the second chapter would be art under Article 356 and is popularly known as President's Rule. And the third one is the Financial Emergency and this falls under Article 360. So we shall be covering all three of the emergencies in different chapters and this one covers national emergencies. So let us begin this chapter and before that I would like to wish all of you a very happy new year and a happy 2019 and I just hope and wish all your dreams comes true in this particular year. So let us have a look at the type of emergencies first. The first one is the national emergency of course and it is under article 352. It is due to war, external aggression or armed rebellion and the constitution employs the expression proclamation of emergency to denote an emergency of this particular type. Then the second one is under Article 356 and this is due to failure of constitutional machinery in the states and this is also popularly known as President's Rule and there are two other names for it which are State Emergency or Constitutional Emergency. However, the constitution does not implement or use the word emergency for this particular situation and is generally known as a President's Rule. So a question for today is let me know that which states are having president's rule at this particular point of time. Then there is financial emergency which is due to threat to the financial stability or credit of the country and this falls under article 360. Now let us have a look at the national emergency under article 352 and the grounds for declaration of it. So the president of India can declare a national emergency when the security of India is under threat and uh, this could be due to war, external aggression or armed rebellion and the president can declare it even before such an act of war, external aggression or armed rebellion occurs if he is convinced that such a situation has arisen. Then uh, according to the article or the 38th Constitutional Amendment Act of 1975, it added that the president can also issue different proclamations on grounds of war, external aggression or armed rebellion whether or not such a proclamation was already issued by him or in effect, so the president can reissue such a proclamation. And whenever the emergency occurs due to war or external aggression, it is called an external emergency. And when it happens because of armed rebellion, it is called an internal emergency. The 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act of 1976 enabled the president to limit the area of operation of national emergency. So the president could uh, implement national emergency in a specified part of India and not the whole of India. For example, if there was a situation of a national emergency 
in Jammu and Kashmir. So a national emergency could be implemented in Jammu and Kashmir and not whole of India. Originally, the constitution mentioned internal disturbance as the third ground for proclamation of a national emergency, but the expression was too vague and had a wider connection. Hence, the 44th Amendment Act of 1978 substituted the words armed rebellion instead of internal disturbance. And the only time it was done because of internal disturbance was in 1975 by Congress government that was headed by Mrs. Indra Gandhi. Then by the 44th Constitutional Amendment Act of 1978, the President can declare only after a written recommendation from the Cabinet and not just the Prime Minister. And this was done that uh, for a simple reason that uh, in 1975, the Prime Minister Indra Gandhi advised the President to proclaim an emergency without consulting her Cabinet. And the Cabinet was informed of the proclamation after it was made as a fait accompli. And the 44th Amendment Act of 1978 introduced this safeguard to eliminate any possibilities of the Prime Minister alone taking the decision in this regard. Then by the 38th Constitutional Amendment Act 1975, the national emergency is immune or was made immune to judicial review and this was taken back by the 44th Constitutional Amendment Act of 1978. This particular provision of being immune to judicial review was taken back. And as a matter of fact, in the Minerva Mill case of 1980, the Supreme Court held that the proclamation of a national emergency can be challenged in a court on a ground of malified or that the declaration was based on wholly extraneous or irrelevant facts or was absurd. So the Supreme Court held that the national emergency could be challenged in a court in the Minerva Mill case of 1980. Now let us have a look at the parliamentary approval and durations. Now let us have a look at the parliamentary approval and duration. So it must be approved by both of the houses of the parliament within one month of the date of issue. And there were a lot of changes made after 1975 in 1978 basically by the 44th Constitutional Amendment Act where everything in regards to approval and duration of national emergency was kind of changed. And firstly, the period was reduced from two months to one month. And if the proclamation of emergency was issued at a time when the Lok Sabha has been dissolved or the dissolution of Lok Sabha takes place during the period of one month without approving the proclamation, then the proclamation survives until 30 days from the first setting of the Lok Sabha after its reconstitution, provided that Rajya Sabha has already approved it. Then it stays approved for a period of six months and it has to be approved by the cabinet every six months. And this provision was also added by the 44th Constitutional Amendment Act of 1978. And before this, uh, the parliament was sorry, the emergency could uh, extend for as long as the cabinet desired. And if the dissolution of the Lok Sabha takes place during a period of six months without approving the further continuance of emergency, then the proclamation survives until 30 days from the first sitting of the Lok Sabha after its reconstitution, provided that Rajya Sabha has in the meantime approved about, of its continuation. Then uh, before the 44th Constitutional Amendment Act of 1978, such a resolution could be passed by a simple majority of the parliament. But the 44th Constitutional Amendment Act of 1978 changed this whole game and made it mandatory that it should be passed by a special majority that is majority of the total members of the house and majority of no less than two thirds of the members present and voting. And uh, this particular provision was in fact introduced by the 44th Constitutional Amendment Act of 1978. So friends, we can see that the 44th Constitutional Amendment Act of 1978 brought in a lot of changes into this whole parliamentary approval and duration thing. Firstly, it changed the period of uh, approval from two months to one month. 
then it uh, made sure that uh, it had to be approved every six months by both the houses of the parliament and in case one of the houses that is the Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha is never dissolved. So Lok Sabha is dissolved then uh, it gave it a grace period of around 30 days from the first sitting of the house provided the Rajya Sabha had already approved it then it made that uh, it should be passed by a special majority and not a simple majority. So let us now have a look at the revocation of the proclamation, how this pro particular proclamation can be taken back. Now let us have a look at the revocation of the proclamation, which means removal of the proclamation of national emergency under Article 352. And the president can remove such a proclamation and does not need the parliamentary approval. So a safeguard was introduced through the 44th Constitutional Amendment Act of 1978 where the Lok Sabha was given a power to pass a resolution disapproving the continuation. And before this the president could do it on its own and the Lok Sabha had no say in this regard. So to do this particular disapproving of the continuation of the proclamation, one tenth of the total members of the Lok Sabha have to give a written notice to the speaker or in case the parliament is not in session then in that case the written notice has to be given to the president and a special sitting is held within 14 days for the consideration of revocation of the proclamation. So this was a safeguard that was introduced through the 44th constitutional amendment act. So let us have a look at the how resolution of disapproval is different from that of approval. And resolution of disapproval is passed by the Lok Sabha only while resolution of, of approval has to be passed through both the houses that is Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. And secondly the first one can be done by a simple majority that is resolution of disapproval can be passed through a simple majority while the second needs a special majority. So resolution of approval needs a special majority that is majority of the total membership of the house and a majority of no less than two thirds of the member of the house present and voting. Now national emergency has certain effects and these are widespread effects that are seen on the, during the national emergency whenever it is declared especially on the political system of the country. And these can be grouped into three main categories which are effects on center state relations. The second is effect on the life of Lok Sabha and the state assemblies and the effect on fundamental rights. Effects on center state relations. The major effect in relation to the center state relationship can be seen in the following three spheres. The first one is the executive, the second one is the legislative and the third one is the financial. Now what is the effect on the executive part of the center state relations and during the normal times the center can give instructions to the state only in certain specified matters. However during the emergency since the state comes totally under the center they can give instructions in any matter and the state government comes under the complete control of the center although it is not suspended. Legislative effect on center state relations. So there are basically five points that come into play when the legislative under the legislative effects on the center state relations whenever there is a national emergency under article 352 declared. And number one point is that during a national emergency the power parliament becomes entitled to make laws on any subject that are mentioned in the state list. Although the legislative power of the state is not suspended, it becomes subject to the overriding power of the parliament. Number two point is the normal distribution of legislative power between state and center is suspended, which means the constitution becomes a unitary one instead of a federal one. Number three point is that the laws made by the parliament in reference to the state cease to be operational after six months of emergency being over. So once the emergency has ceased to operate these particular laws that have been made by the parliament on the state subjects become inoperative after six months. Number four point is in case of in case that the parliament is not in session the president can make laws on the state subjects too during an emergency. And number fifth point is that the parliament 
can confer powers and impose duties upon the center and its officers and authorities in respect to matters outside the union list in order to carry out the laws made by it under the extended jurisdiction due to the proclamation of emergency and number six point is that by the 42nd constitutional amendment act of 1976 an important fact was added that the laws that were made under the executive and the legislative effects on the center state relations so these particular laws could be extended to any other state and not just the affected state during a national emergency so this is a very important point and uh, it means that uh, these particular consequences that have been mentioned in executive and legislative can extend to any state during a national emergency even though the national emergency has been declared in just one state the financial effects on center state relations and while a proclamation of national emergency is in operation the president can modify the constitutional distribution of revenues between the center and the state and this means the president can either reduce or cancel the transfer of finances from the center to the states and such a modification continues till the end of financial year in which the emergency ceases to operate and uh, also that every such order needs to be placed in front of both the houses of the parliament by the president so this is the effect uh, this is the financial effect and the president has got more or less all the say in these matters where he can actually cancel the transfer or reduce or modify the transfer of funds from the center to the state now during an emergency the life of the lok sabha can be extended beyond its normal term which is 5 years one year at a time and this can be done for any length of time as long as the emergency is still in operation and uh, however this extension cannot continue beyond a period of 6 months once once the emergency has ceased to operate and uh, an example of this is the term of the 5th lok sabha which was from 1971 and went up to 1977 was extended two times by one year at a time and this was during the national emergency that was proclaimed in 1975 by indira gandhi and this was basically the only emergency that was done because of internal disturbance as far as we all know and the same applies for the state legislative assemblies as well who have a normal tenure of uh, five years and this can also be extended by one year at a time for any length of time and during the national emergency this is a subject to a maximum period of six months after the emergency has ceased to operate one of the most important effects of national emergency is the effect on fundamental rights and articles 358 and 359 describe the effects of national emergency on fundamental rights article 358 deals in suspension of fundamental rights guaranteed by article 19 and article 359 deals with other fundamental rights except those guaranteed by article 20 and 21 so let us have a look at these two articles and how they affect the fundamental rights according to article 358 when a national emergency is declared the six fundamental rights guaranteed under article 19 which are freedom to speech and expression right to assembly right to association and societies right to move freely right to reside and settle in any part of the country and right to practice profession these are automatically suspended so what does it mean so when the national emergency is in operation the state is freed from the restrictions imposed by article 19 in other words the state can make any law or can take any executive action 
abridging or taking away the six fundamental rights guaranteed by Article 19. Any such law or executive action cannot be challenged on grounds that they are inconsistent with six fundamental rights guaranteed by Article 19. When a national emergency ceases to operate, Article 19 automatically revives and comes into force. Any law made during emergency to the extent or inconsistency with Article 19 ceases to have effect. However, no remedy for anything done during the emergency even after the emergency expires is there. This means that the legislative and executive actions taken during the emergency cannot be challenged even after the emergency ceases to operate. So what are the restrictions on it? The 44th Constitutional Amendment Act of 1978 restricted the scope of Article 358 in two ways. Number one, it can be suspended only in case of war and external aggression and not armed rebellion. So this was a very important part that if the national emergency has been imposed on the grounds of war or external aggression, then only these fundamental rights can be suspended and not in case of armed rebellion. Number two, the only laws that are related to emergency are protected and not other laws. So the only laws that were made in relation to the emergency were protected from being challenged in the court of law and not any or and not the other laws which were there they could be challenged in the court of laws. Article 359 authorizes the president to suspend the right to move to any court of law for enforcement of fundamental rights under the national emergency. So what does this mean? This means that under Article 359, the fundamental rights as such are not suspended, but only their enforcement. The said rights are theoretically alive, but the right to seek remedy is suspended. The suspension of enforcement relates to only those fundamental rights that are specified in the presidential order. Further, the suspension could be for a period during the operation of emergency or for a shorter period as mentioned in the order and the suspension order may extend to the whole or any part of the country. It should be laid before each house of the parliament for approval. While the presidential order is in force, the state can make any law or can take any executive action abridging or taking away a specified fundamental right. Any such law or executive action cannot be challenged on the grounds that they are inconsistent with the specified fundamental rights. When the order ceases to operate, any law so made to the extent of inconsistency with a specified fundamental right ceases to have effect. But no remedy lies for any action that has been done during the operation of the order even after the order ceases to operate. This means that the legislative and executive actions taken during the operation of the order cannot be challenged even after the order expires. So what are the restrictions that have been imposed by the 44th Constitutional Amendment Act of 1978? And uh, these have been, Article 359 has been restricted in basically two of two ways. Firstly, the president cannot suspend the right to move to court for the enforcement of fundamental rights guaranteed by Articles 20, which is right to conviction to offenses and Article 21, which is right to life and personal liberty. So these remain enforceable even during an emergency. And number two, again, is only laws related to the emergency are protected from being challenged and not all the laws. So these are only the laws that have been made during the emergency and are in relation to the emergency are protected from being challenged in the court of laws and not all the laws. Let us now have a look at the difference between Article 358 and 359. 
Article 358 is confined to fundamental rights under Article 19 only, while Article 359 covers all the fundamental rights that are given in the Presidential Order of the National Emergency. Article 358 automatically suspends the fundamental rights given in Article 19, while Article 359 only empowers the President to suspend the enforcement of specified fundamental rights. Then Article 358 operates only in case of war or external aggression and Article 359 operates in all cases including that of armed rebellion as well. Article 358 suspends rights under Article 19 for the entire duration of the emergency while Article 359 suspends for a specified period of time as said in the presidential order or could be for that could be for the entire length or for a shorter period of time article 358 extends to the entire country while article 359 may extend to the entire country or part of it it suspends article 19 completely while article 359 does not allow the suspension of article 20 and 21 then it allows the states to make laws inconsistent with Article 19, and it allows to make it allows the states to make laws inconsistent with only those fundamental rights that have been mentioned in the presidential order. So these are the differences between Article 358 and 359. However, there are some similarities also between Article 358 and 359. As they both provide immunity from challenge to only those laws which are related with the emergency and not other laws and also the executive action taken only under such a law is protected by both. So these are the two similarities which are between article 358 and 359. So let us have a look at the national emergencies that have occurred so far. The first one was in 1962. And this was on account of the Chinese aggression in the northeastern frontier region, which is now Arunachal Pradesh, and was in force till the year 1968. And therefore, there was no need of a fresh proclamation at the time of war against Pakistan in 1965. The second proclamation of national emergency was made in December 1971. And this was in wake of attack by Pakistan. And even when this emergency was in operation, a third proclamation of national emergency was made in June 1975. And both the second and third proclamations were revoked in March 1977. So in March 1977, both the 1971 and 1975 emergencies were revoked. And uh, the first two proclamations that were in 1962 and 1971 were on the grounds of external aggression, while the third proclamation was on the grounds of internal disturbance, that is certain persons have been inciting the police and the armed forces against the discharge of their duties and their normal functioning. So the emergency declared in 1975 proved to be the most controversial. And there was a widespread criticism of the misuse of emergency powers. And as we see that in 1978 by the 44th Constitutional Amendment Act, there were a lot of changes that were made in the whole process of calling in a national emergency. So this was a particular emergency which was imposed in 1975 was uh, revoked in 1977 and after the emergency the Congress party led by Indira Gandhi lost the election and Janta party came into power. So the government appointed by the Shah Commission, the government appointed the Shah Commission to investigate the circumstances that warranted the declaration of the emergency in 1975 and the commission did not justify the declaration of emergency and as I said, the 44th Constitutional Amendment Act was enacted in 1978 to introduce a number of safeguards against the misuse of emergency provisions. So this was the whole story behind the 1975 emergency, which was due to internal disturbance and that made a lot of safeguards to be issued 
in calling up for an emergency. So this was the first one of the three types of emergencies, which is the national emergency and it is due to war, external aggression or armed rebellion under Article 352 and is popularly known as national emergency. So in the next chapter, we shall have a look at the second kind of emergency, which is due to failure of constitutional machinery in the states, which is Article 356 and is also popularly known as the president's rule. So friends, thank you so much for watching and do like and subscribe to this channel in case you have enjoyed this video. And don't forget to tell your friends to subscribe to UPSC Logics. And this year, hopefully I'll be uploading a lot of new videos. So thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.